Hi, this is Kara Tierney from Monroe Community College, and this video is all about how to draw Lewis structures. Now, there's a lot of steps to this, so we are going to get started right away. Step 1. First thing you need to do is calculate the number of valence electrons that are available in your structure. Remember that for your main group elements, this is the same number as their U.S. group number on the periodic table. If there is a charge, you need to take that into consideration. So you need to add electrons. If you have a negative charge, that means electrons have been added to the structure. And if you have a positive charge, you need to subtract electrons because electrons have been taken away. Let's look at how this is done. So for the carbonate polyatomic ion, CO3 2 minus, carbon comes in with four electrons because it is in group four. That's for carbon. There are three oxygen atoms. Each of those comes in with six valence electrons because it is in group six. And we add two electrons because it has an overall charge of negative two. This gives us, gives us a total of 24 valence electrons for the structure. Let's look at BrF3. Both bromine and fluorine have seven valence electrons because they're both halogens in group seven. Bromine comes in with seven and the three fluorines each come in with seven as well. And this adds up to 28 valence electrons. I'd like you to try the next two by yourself and see if your answer compares to mine. Please press pause and then come back when you're done. Let's look at SO2. Both sulfur and oxygen are in the sixth group, so they both come in with six valence electrons. So S comes in with six, and both oxygens also come in with six and it gives us a total of 18 valence electrons. In the last example, S comes in with six, it is in group six. Carbon is in group four, it comes in with four. And nitrogen is in group five. We need to add one electron in order to compensate for this negative one charge. And we get a total of 16 valence electrons. Notice these are all even numbers you should not end up with a number that is odd. If you do, you've made a mistake, and that's a good way for you to check your answer. Step number two is deciding on your central atom and your terminal atoms. Central atoms are bonded to more than one atom, and terminal atoms are on the outside, only bonded to that central atom. Some tips for figuring out what your central atom is are as follows. First of all, carbon is always a central atom. You can think of carbon as being a very social butterfly. Hydrogen, however, likes to stay on the periphery and is, al is always a terminal atom because, if you recall, hydrogen does not want a full octet. It is happy with two electrons, so it can only bond once. Halogens generally don't like to be central atoms, but they can be if needed. And many molecules tend to be symmetrical, so if there's only one atom of a particular element, it will be the central atom. Let me show you how these work out. So in CO3, 2 minus, we have a carbon in this molecule, well, this polyatomic ion, so carbon is our central atom. In the second example, there are three fluorines, but just one bromine. So we're going to put bromine in the middle, because that will make it most symmetrical. I'm circling the central atom. For SO2, once again, you have two oxygens and just one sulfur, so to make it the most symmetrical possible, we're going to put S in the middle. And in our third structure, carbon is involved, so that will always go in the middle. Our next step is to write the correct skeletal structure. Many molecules tend to be symmetrical, so keep this in mind. Also keep in mind that right now angles don't matter because this isn't showing what an actual molecule looks like, it's just showing how the electrons are distributed. When we have uh, something like CO3, we know carbon's in the middle, so we're just going to put the oxygens all around the outside. For now, we are only going to be dealing with structures with one central atom. So if we had something like BRF3, all of those, BR, the BR goes in the middle with all of the Fs on the outside. Once again, you can draw this however you want as long as the BR is in the middle. Notice I'm also drawing lines here. Uh, that'll be explained in the next step. S will go in the middle of both O's, and our C goes in the middle of the S and N. 
Uh, just so you know, if you see something that says A, B, 5, that uh, A will go in the middle of all five Bs. Uh, it could be like A, B, 6 as well. That will be an exception to our octet rule, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later in this video. So I'm drawing my connecting lines. Each of these represents two electrons, and it also represents a single covalent bond. When I draw each of these, I have now drawn six electrons in this structure because I've drawn three lines. The rest of the electrons are going to be distributed as lone pairs. This means that they're pairs of electrons, so we're drawing two at a time that aren't involved in bonding. And I'm going to add them. I'm starting with the terminal atoms first, and I'm filling up the octet. So I'm going to fill up my oxygen's octet before I move on to another atom. So I'm going to do this with each terminal atom until I get to the magic number. For CO32 minus, we said that we had 24 electrons available. So once I have drawn 24 electrons, I need to stop. So I'm filling up the octet here. And if we count up our electrons, which if you do that right now, you will see, remembering that each line is worth two, that we have drawn our 24 electrons and we must stop. Now this structure is not finished because our carbon does not have its octet. It needs eight electrons and it only has six. In the next step, we'll see what happens with that. Let's look at BrF3. We decided that Br was our central atom and F was going to go on our outside. I placed six electrons and I need to place a total of 28 electrons. So let's place our lone pairs on the terminal atoms. I fill up one before I move on to the next one. And once I've filled them up, if we count how many we've placed so far, we've placed 24, but we need to get to a total of 28. So I put the last I have two here. I still have 26. Everybody has a full octet. So this one is actually going to not be finished as well. And we're going to talk about what to do with those extra two electrons because we've only placed 26 electrons. We'll talk about what to do with the, the last two in a later step when we talk about exceptions. For the next two, what I'd like you to do is do the same as I did before. Place your electrons until you have reached your maximum. So SO2, you're going to be placing 18 electrons. All single bonds so far, we'll talk about multiple, multiple bonds in a second. And you have 16 electrons to place in SCN minus. Pause the video now and try this example and I'll show you how it's done when you get back. So for SO2, this is what our structure looked like, and I'm placing my electrons as such on 1O, and now I'm going to place them here. Let's see, how many have we placed? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and when we get them all placed on the terminal atoms, we put them on the central atom, 18, and I'm all done. Let's look at SCN. I have 16 electrons, so I'll start placing them on my nitrogen. You could start on your sulfur if you wanted to. And let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. So we're all done with those. Now these structures aren't complete yet. We still need to do another step. The next step is if any atoms lack an octet, we need to form multiple bonds as necessary to give them octets. So let's look at CO3. Our structure looked like this. So here's my structure, and it says if any atoms lack an octet. Let's look at our structure here. Yes, we have an atom that lacks an octet. That is our carbon. So what we do is we form a multiple bond between carbon and one of the terminal atoms. We erase one non-bonding pair, so one lone pair. I'm just going to pick this pair right now. So I'm going to erase it. And what happens is those electrons are now shared between carbon and oxygen. 
So now that forms a double bond. I erase one pair and I draw one pair. So the same number of electrons appears. I don't move it onto the central atom because then oxygen wouldn't have enough electrons. So instead it's sharing, oxygen's being nice. So this is our final structure. So we can just basically erase this entire thing right here. And this is what the structure looks like. Let's do one more and then I'll have you do SCN minus. So SO2, when we draw this structure, it came out to look like this. And we see that sulfur only has six electrons when it needs eight. So I'm going to pick a non-bonding pair on a terminal atom. So let's pick this non-bonding pair. And it's going to move, so we cross it out, and we draw it as a double bond now in between sulfur and oxygen. And that is our structure. You could draw it on the other oxygen too, it wouldn't matter. So now, pause the video. There are three possible structures for SCN minus. I want to see if you can get all three of those structures. When you think you have them, uh, press play and see how you did. Here are the possible structures that you could come up with. So when we draw this, This is what we get for the structure. One thing that we can do is take this and make it a double, and take this and make it a double, so we end up with two double bonds. Another possibility that you could draw would be to make a triple bond here and a single bond here. Or you could make a single bond with the nitrogen and a triple bond with the sulfur. All three of these structures are very valid right now. In another video, we're going to decide which structure is the most valid or would be the most possible to be found in nature. But for now, this is fine. These three structures are great. So now let's talk about the exceptions to the octet rule. There are three atoms that will have a diminished octet. Hydrogen we've talked about. Hydrogen only wants two valence electrons and it's happy. The other two we haven't talked about. Beryllium only wants four electrons and boron is happy with six. So let's look at BH3. BH3, if we count up the total number of uh, valence electrons, Boron is in group three, so it comes in with three, and we have three hydrogens, each coming in with one. This gives us six valence electrons. Boron will go in the middle because hydrogens are never the central atom. So let me just draw that. And when we draw the single bonds, we've placed all six of our valence electrons. Boron is happy as it is because it is an atom that has a diminished octet. So this is the structure for boron trihydride. The other exception would be expanded octets. These are atoms that are central atoms that are happy with more than eight valence electrons. So a central atom can actually have up to 12 valence electrons if it is in the third period or lower. So you need to look up that central atom and see if it's low enough on the periodic table, if it's a big enough atom where it can compensate and uh, hold the up to 12 valence electrons. Let's look at our BRF3. Now we last looked at it and it had a structure that looked like this. And we knew that it needs 28 valence electrons and we've only placed 26. We look at bromine and we see that it is indeed below the third period. It needs to be in the third period or lower and it is big enough so that it can hold more than eight electrons. So the last two will go as, not as a double bond typically, but as a lone pair. 
I will explain in another video how to tell if it's going to be placed as a double bond or just as a lone pair on that central atom. And this is actually what our structure looks like, with each of our terminal atoms having an octet and the central atom having an expanded octet so that it has five pairs of electrons. The last two steps are pretty simple. If you've drawn a polyatomic ion, I want you to draw brackets around it and indicate its charge as a superscript. Let's go back and I'll show you how this is done. So, for CO3 2 minus, we're going to draw brackets around it with a 2 minus. For each of our structures for SCN minus, we're going to draw brackets with a minus. This just indicates to anybody who has looked at your structure where that extra electron or electrons are coming from. The last thing you should do is really check your structure. Does it indeed have the right number of valence electrons? And do all the atoms have a full octet? Now hydrogen and the other exceptions that we talked about it won't have a full octet, but every other atom should have eight electrons. So now it's your turn. Draw the Lewis structures for each of the following. I have three structures, and I want you to try these by yourself, and we're going to discuss them in class when you get there.